next video of the series we're doing leading up to Halloween. Um, today is the film Insidious 1 and 2. We're very lucky that our local cinema um, had both of them showing one after the other and we it was the first day of um, the second one ever being shown so that was pretty cool. Yeah, An experience. We're, we're recording this on the 12th of September so we actually yeah. went to see it the day before it came out. It's quite cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, someone has a good connection. Even though um, during Insidious 1 we had people behind us who would just fuck up the whole time. The whole making time. stupid jokes. And we were into it. Pretty yeah. much. But they were quite quiet during 2. And then I'd seen 1 as well. I've never seen it in the cinema. So no, it was the first time. Yeah. Now you can appreciate the sound. Yeah, definitely. Because that's quite prompt, like, on that thing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just being on a big screen with loads of people really. I don't normally get that. I normally get my films and I'm watching them. Experiencing the surround, like yeah. fear, like of lots of people jumping at the same time. And <laughs> yeah, like um, the last time I had something like that was Evil Dead. And before that, I don't remember. Evil Dead was more cringing though. The other one was. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, Insidious 1 and 2. Yeah. Um, we'll start with Insidious 1. Mm -hmm. um, it basically is. Uh, this uh, this family have just moved into a house, and they start hearing noises and all that and weird Specifically. stuff. Specifically, yeah. And then um, their little boy goes to sleep and doesn't wake up, and they think it's a coma. But the family continue to see all these scary, horrible things, um, and the mum decides that it's the house. But it, they move house, and the scary, horrible things carry on happening. And then they bring in psychics and everything, and we find out that the boy is some traveller from his sleep where he went into the fervour, I believe it was called, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, the fervour. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Astro travel. Huh? Astro travel. Astro travel, that's it. Uh -huh. um, and he had been taken, and he's... Gabriel, sorry. Can you edit that out? Um, and he um, has been sort of taken and that the dad, who used to be an astral traveller as well, needs to go into the fervour to bring back the child. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the fervour or recall would be would the be cliche horrible. thing. Um, Lipstick face. Yeah, Darth Maul. Um, and the Insidious 1 ended with it turning out that Dad had been possessed, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so the um, um, the spirit or demon or the entity got inside his body. Yeah, so. in which the old woman that um, had been haunting the dad since he was a child horrible. had got into the body and then killed the psychic, which was actually quite horrible because I quite like the psychic. She's mm. really nice. Yeah, she's nice. Yeah, yeah she's all right. Yeah, well. But, um, yeah, and it was quite... The first one I remember watching and thinking it was really cool because it's a haunted house film. Yeah. But it's not in the fact that they move house halfway through and they continue to be it's haunted. It's the idea that it follows them. There aren't, I don't think there have been many films before the idea of the haunting following them. Yeah. I mean, it has been used in a couple, but not really. I mean, we've had films that in which it's like, well, there's no point in you moving because um, it, it, will, it will continue to follow That's them. almost a cop-out of just we don't need to make any more sets for the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a few cop-outs, I think, in the second one, but we'll go into that later. Mm -hmm. But the first one, no, I thought... I remember watching the first one and thinking it was really original, really good. Yeah. Um, I thought the main... the demon thing was stupid. It looked really stupid. I mean, when you first saw it, it was kind of, oh, he looks like Darth Maul. It's and terrifying, then, it's behind. And then when you see him later on, and he's walking, he's got... Goats yeah, and he's whatever. running up the wall. Yeah. It's not scary. It's, not it's, scary. it's the whole um, the build up. To if anything, something. if anything, the old woman was the scary one. Yeah, that that's the, the image that stays with me at night. Yeah, the old woman was pretty scary. There was a really creepy bit when he went into the fervor, and um, you had this family. And oh god, I remember watching it and being so creeped Brilliant. out because like they're not moving, but they're blinking. And they're making noises. So he walks in and sees one ironing and two on the sofa, one uh, reading the paper and whispering. He goes out and it shows, like, I'm guessing it was a daughter. 
um, loading up the shotgun. Then he hears a shotgun, goes round to the front room, sees the family, they'd all been shot, and then just her standing with a really big smile on her face, and then he walks out of the front room to continue it, turns round and the whole family are standing there, and then they just suddenly, it's like, um, is it stop animation? When they do the animation, but it's literally where they've moved it. You know, like yeah, stop start, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, it's like they did that for the serious face and the smiles, and the smile was so fucking creepy. Yeah. It's unreal. It was. I remember being. That was the bit that creeped me out. The first one. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was the bit that creeped me out. Is it was just this whole, that and the bit where you know where the guy was going around with the different colours. And yeah, the two yeah, yeah. girls were there. Disappeared. Yeah, that was really creepy as well. I'd forgotten how good the film was actually, because it's been a while since I've seen it. I did originally see it in the cinema, but even though I've seen so many horror movies, I've never felt so tense. Even though I, I kind of knew what was going to happen. I know the rules of horror. You get the little scare, you get the big scare. And I've seen it before, but I was still sat there, like, just all of tension. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could feel, I could feel you. Feel yeah. Up, but, um,. No, actually, I think that the director, um, well, who was the director again? He did Saw, didn't he? Oh, no. James Quarles or something no, like no, that. No, no, um, no. Um, actually, speaking of that, um, the the director, the way he directs horrors is actually really good because, you, as you say, like the little scare and the big scare, mm. I actually felt that ra- he sort of built up the scare really qu- quietly. And then when you thought, oh no, nothing's going to happen, then there's the scare. Like there was this one bit where she was chasing a little boy around the house, wasn't she? Yeah. And she went to go and check the shoes underneath the cupboard. And she's checked the shoes. She's so certain. Yeah, she's checked the shoes. And you're like, you, before you've got that instant to sort of go, oh, there's nothing there, boy comes out. Mm. And it was like, the, um, it made me jump. He doesn't stick to the rules. No, not at all. Like, there was the tea towel square, the scare that gets me every single time I watch that. Right <laughs> and the hand time, jumps up. Where he goes to the tea towel thing and the hand just grabs him and that. But, like, other than that, nearly every scare is, like, literally, you're just about to feel like everything's okay and yeah. it gets you. It's not like usual horrors and that where you watch it and it's like, oh, everything's okay. Then it gets you. Mm. It was just before that moment where you feel it's okay, then it gets you. Um... Yeah, the smiling family was pretty. Um, but um, I liked the two comic relief guys as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which they really they were in the good. second one. They were good. They were better in the second one, actually, I thought. Um, but like. I they think were comic relief, weren't they? Yeah, because like, seeing it in the cinema, I picked up on stuff I'd never picked up on before. Like, when he brings out his torch, his friend brings out a bigger torch. Like a know? million um, candle power or something. Yeah, which was quite cool. And then um, we had moments where we watched it and we'd noticed stuff we hadn't laughed at mm. as well. Like um, she was walking through the house and you saw the little boy in the corner. Yeah. Before she walked out of the house. My, my brain went, there's this boy standing there. And then when she walked away, I was like, no, there was, there was. I'm, I was. I took me a minute to, to kind of... Yeah, the same as um, the first time I watched it. You know when she goes and checks on the child when the house has been opened up? Yeah. And you have that thing in the background. I didn't notice that the first time I watched it. So when I watched it in the cinema, I could see him standing there. And you can actually see him standing there before the music tells you to jump. You can actually see him standing there, which is quite cool. Because it's like... It's not like he's just appeared. He's standing there the whole time. And then and it's, it's almost like, like this is this is cueing you in. Yeah. This is kind of saying something's happening in the scene. Check it out. Yeah, like um, the only sort of film I can think of that's like that is Paranormal. Paranormal Activity, where it's like oh. something's there and it's there the whole time, but you don't really you won't jump notice it until it tells you. Which to tells notice it. you that more than anything tells you that the rules of horror, like music, people underestimate how powerful music is in horror. Music and lighting, so important. It really yeah, is. Definitely. But you just don't, you don't realise sort of like what it's like until just it's a different way of doing it. Mm. And I remember watching the ending of Insidious and thinking, if they're going to make a second one, how do they manage to make a second one? They answered it, obviously, because we watched the second one, um, which we'll get into now. Mm. Just before you go on to the second right. one, you mentioned the director, and I've forgotten his name, but he is um, involved in Saw. And if anyone hasn't noticed this yet, in um, the scene, in the, the classroom scene, it's only for a few moments, I think it's about halfway through. Yeah, in the he's beginning. sitting in the classroom. Yeah, um, uh, behind the main character's head, because he's a teacher, 
um, you actually see um, what do they call him? I don't know. A jigsaw. The, he's the puppet, isn't he? He's the yeah. He's the, he's the puppet from Saw, but it's just his face with the number eight underneath. That's because at the time, obviously, they were releasing the eighth film. Yeah, the trivia film. Eight thousand. Yeah. That I'm the one with trivia at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> most, most of the time. But yeah. Mm. Yeah. But um. So. Yeah, and then we had a little break. Uh-huh. Managed to have a little break in which um. Lovely Sam went and got me some popcorn, some black bear, and some wine gum. Um, and then um, Insidious 2 started, in which... Oh, actually, saying that about Insidious, um, I do really like the fact that it's a really old-school horror thing, but it literally just comes up with Insidious. That's the start of the film. And that music, yeah. so loud. I can't uh. remember. I think, I think the Omen, the original Omen's like that, isn't it? It just comes up, The Omen sort of thing after um, it's not ashamed of its title is it? it's like oh it's called, we called this yeah okay. it's a, a really old school touch which is quite nice actually because I do like my old school horrors anyway Insidious 2 mm-hmm. um, we pick it up we kind of at first get shown what happens with the dad when he was a little boy um, so before anyone has seen this because obviously it's still quite new we're obviously going to give spoilers of Insidious 2 so if you, if you really don't want to know then just stop watching yeah, it now this is the cut off point you could listen yeah. to Insidious 1 but we're going to talk about Insidious 2 now um, yeah and which they show the dad when he was younger because obviously he was being chased by this old woman well old woman um, and then it jumps to how Insidious 1 ended and mm-hmm. um we get the wife being talked to by the police, um, and then it carries on, and they move. They move into the grandma's house, so they've moved three times in two films, mm. um, and they the wife starts seeing things like a baby stroller thing starts walking, and she keeps <laughs> hearing the piano. Playing. Bloody horrible! Yeah, yeah. and then. Um, the grandma sees something and she goes straight away to contact the two comedy relief guys from the first and obviously they're trying to cope with um, the psychic Elisa's death um, so they in turn contact someone else which we're shown helps with the little boy and those four go and try and contact Elise but they get tricked into going to see this other woman's house and we start to get the story of the old woman while this is happening, it turns out that Josh, the dad, is possessed by the old woman and everyone's all suspicious and everything. He doesn't remember like songs, little touches like that. Yeah. Um, and then, so the four find out that obviously Josh is possessed. They go back, try and stop him. Instead, he just goes totally crazy. Cuckoo. And, proper yeah, shiny. Proper crazy. Like, there are shiny parts. And then um, we then get put into the further, is it? Yeah, it's yeah, the further. Into the There's film. a lot that happened in this film, actually. Yeah, it's uh, quite a lot. They went into the further. Josh met up with Elise and this guy. And then they decided to try and get the old woman out of Josh's body. Um, and whilst Josh is trying to kill the rest of the family, Dalton has then gone Son. in. Yeah, Dalton, the, the <laughs> psychic son, has gone into the fervor to try and save his dad. Um, and just, they literally sort of come back and, and the family get back together. Everything's okay. And then we get shown right at the end, the two comedy guys go and see someone to talk about their child. And Elise, as a ghost, comes and talks to the child. And then she sees something behind the child. We hear clicking, which makes us think that it's that demon again because that was what it did in the first one and then it just ended um so a lot second happens one. in the second one a lot happens in the second one um first of all i thought it was a complete cop out of the ending of the first one just to get that out of the way like i thought it was stupid that the wife was being interviewed by the policeman going oh do you think your husband killed her and she's like no don't believe my husband killed her. And then later on in the film, you just they just get a phone call from the police saying, oh, we don't think your husband killed her. And it was like... That well, surely he would have been taken in. I just realised that. Yeah, he didn't. Why didn't he... He would have been arrested if he was exactly. suspected of murder. It was just their way of sort of debunking the last one, didn't it? And by the way, the wife 
yeah? You're a shit mum and a shit wife, okay? You're not by the end of the film. Well, like, you looked at me like that. Um, no, you've got to think. Fine. You've got to think that she comes in. Remember how Insidious One ends, okay? She yeah. comes in, she finds Elise dead, yeah. she looks on the, the camera, and it shows the old woman, yeah? And then she turns round, and the husband gives her a bit of a fright. Well, then. She, like, totally refuses to believe there's anything wrong with her husband. Her hu she believes her husband and everything. She doesn't think he's possessed. What did she think happened to Elise? What did she think the camera, who had taken the no, picture of the old woman, wasn't had she, to do with? Wasn't she just pretending that everything was okay, knowing that something was wrong, because she didn't want him to catch on? No, she wasn't. Because, remember, she turned around to the husband and was like, Oh, I think I saw something. And the husband was straight away, no, you didn't see anything. I just want us to move on. Oh, of course, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. she was there just... There aren't any ghosts, oh, there are. Yeah, she was just in complete yeah. denial. What a terrible wife and mum. She must have known something was wrong. Otherwise, she's just... She's either in complete denial or really stupid. Although, although the photograph showed the woman, but she doesn't know that... Is it Elise? The, the, psychic. the psychic. Yeah. She doesn't know that Elise took a picture of him. Well, where would she have got the photo of the old she woman She could have just from? taken a picture and she could have been there and that's what killed her. So, therefore, ah, that means that she, she didn't she not necessarily thought it was her husband. Or, see? You could take that point, but then yeah. you've also got to see that, like, who killed Elise then? The woman. Apparently. But then how would the woman have managed? Because the husband gets away with it by going, oh yeah, there were loads of spirits. But the spirits all disappeared before they went into the kitchen. And then... She must have noticed that her husband was being different. I mean, she but noticed with the song. The spirits don't make any sense. Like, none of it makes any sense. Therefore, you can just kind of go, oh, anything could have happened. True, but she didn't, like, she noticed that the husband didn't rem remember the song. Yeah. But she still didn't refuse to believe she's a, it. She's a songwriter, and um, there's a song that she keeps playing because she keeps trying to get it right she and played figure it, it out. She played it the first one. Yeah, she played it the first one, and yeah. her um, husband should have known it. So then... Um, she keeps hearing it being played by a spirit. It keeps keeps happening. And um, he didn't recognise it as being her song. So that's how she kind of caught on. Exactly. And she didn't really catch on though, did she? She still had to no. wait for someone to explain it to her. It's just like, that's a shame. Because she was the one in the first one that was like, we need to get something sorted. So there's something wrong. And then in this one, she just seemed like all her intelligence had gone. she was gone. a bit defeated by yeah, that point. Yeah, all her intelligence She's probably exhausted. Be I'd be a bit pissed off if that was real life. And you've just gone through all of that, and suddenly it was over. If things started up again, you'd be like, "I haven't got it in me again." That, or you, you just wouldn't relax the first time. You just mm -hmm. carry on. But I, I don't know. It's, it's a film. I mean, I'm guessing this one was the end of the chapter of the that family. So it would have been yeah. interesting to see what it would have been like if it was Hannah. And then um, the woman, the old lady ghost, who is fucking creepy, by yeah. the way. Um, it turned out that it was a man who, when he was younger, his mum obviously wanted a girl, and she dressed him up as a little girl and made him really sort of think that he was had a different name and everything, and he like turned into a serial killer, and then he obviously went into Josh and like tried to become the serial killer again, in which um, the mum was probably the scariest ghost we've seen in Sidious One and Two. Yeah. She was a really scary it ghost. It is the character that sticks with me all the time. Yeah. Mm. No, not the old woman, the mum of the actual serial killer. Did you not think, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the woman in white. Yeah. Who was, was, she was horrible. She was... Yeah, she was really creepy. But um, I do think... By the way, um, if anyone recognises that storyline, you probably do. That's the psycho storyline. The son being made to feel like he's a daughter and then growing up and become a serial killer dressed as his mum sort of thing yeah that's psycho so but that that's fine i can wave that uh, i didn't i thought that the whole ghost being an ex serial killer was a bit tired and easy you know how easy is this is to sort of go there's an evil ghost in me by the way there used to be a serial killer like um, yeah. the frighteners and stuff like that you know it's like do you really need to have him as a serial killer really no I, I was quite enjoying the fact that it was an old woman but I'll, I'll let it go it's fine um, I did like the fact that um, obviously we're getting into the whole law of insidious and they have a red door 
the four yeah. of their little worlds. I do quite like that because there's like a red door. They have to go through a red door to go into like where they show, um, I think it was Clayton or Carlton, wasn't it his name? It was something like that where he was like being dressed as a little girl and his mum was telling him off for saying yeah. his proper name and that. And then obviously if you remember in the first one, they had to go through a red door to find the demon. So I do quite like that. I do quite like that. There are a couple of pretty good scares as well, I thought that maybe jump. Um, trying to think of ones right now, but I know there were ones a couple of ones. Um, it was, there wasn't as many ghosts in this one, actually. You had sort of dead bodies, didn't you? Yeah, sort of standing a horrible there. scene where there was, was it 12 or 15 or something like that? Um, loads of bodies standing up, or sitting down at one point, but standing up, but with sheets over their head. And it was like, it was it was horrible because you didn't know what they looked like underneath, and because you thought any second now they're going to jump out or something was going to happen, but yeah. they didn't, which is kind of worse. I love the fact this director goes against all the rules because you're just left so fucking tense, and all you want is that relief of a jump, and then you know you're safe for a moment. Yeah, like and are, it you talking, are you talking about the bit where he's in the room and they're all standing yeah. there and he's going one by one? Yeah. And you're like sort of thinking. You're kind of waiting for. For the dead bodies to. And they just when it's. You know, and he's just stood there. He's like. Yeah, and then he <laughs> takes it off and it's the creepy mum walking. Get, she was proper creepy. Yeah. Um, I know you was having um, trouble with something, wasn't you? Like, because they were bounced around in time, weren't they? Yeah, I did get a bit confused because they, um, apparently they can jump through time and stuff. And it was. For a moment, I was like, oh, I've forgotten something. I've confused myself. And then I hadn't. But it's, it's so original, actually. I liked it, but it was just... It was very different. I need to see it again. It might be a film that some people may need to see more than once because yeah. I think it's just very different. Yeah, it definitely it's is. so I different. Mean, what, the way I sort of looked at it was they're in the ghost world. It kind of makes sense that they could jump around in time yeah. because they're kind of... If you can believe that they're ghosts that live on a different sort of almost... Not a different plane, but a different level to everything else. There's no reason why they can't. Yeah, because they're kind of in change. limbo, aren't they? Yeah. Sort of thing. I mean, it didn't explain why they could. It didn't explain it at all. Because there's a really cool bit where um, you're watching okay. Josh go in. And um, he's trying to get into the house. But it's connected with the first one. Because yeah. I don't know if you remember in the first one, he the house alarm went off, didn't it? And the door was open and everything. It shows why that happened because yeah. it actually shows that it was, Josh, it was Josh as a ghost that breaking into the house so to save good. the baby, and you're sort of like watching it going, "Oh yeah, that's really good. That's a really good little really sort smart. of link." Um, but yeah, and then it just sort of shows it go back because he talks to himself as a child, and the child shows where the um, the horrible ghost mm -hmm. is living. But yeah, it was just it was kind of left field. It was kind of oh, by the way, they can time travel. I, I thought it was creepier and scarier. But he's got your baby, he's got your oh, baby, he's got your baby. God, he's that's horrible. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. But, um, yeah, I think it was definitely creepier and scarier. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but I think I think I had a few more problems with this film. Just in storyline and continuity I don't think, I think it was good to see one after the other because then obviously it's even more impressive when you see them jump backwards and forwards and stuff that made it awesome but I think it, it did make it I think it made it a bit confusing as well maybe because it was late when we saw it I don't know but I definitely need to see it again I, I want to see it again yeah. I think I think the problem was that they obviously did a good catchy ending for Insidious 1 yeah not knowing that 100% how they were going to do number 2 and then they were like they kind of shot themselves in the foot with that ending because I always thought, how could they start number two if the wife practically knows that he's killed the old woman? But they sort of just yeah. poo pooed that, which was really it's weird. It's a shame. But, I mean, I, I still think it's a pretty pretty good film. Anyway. Oh, I think I loved that it. I in Series really 1 it. and 2, the guy who directs them needs to carry on directing them. Yeah. Because he's obviously done these two and he's done um, The Conjuring. Three of all are probably some of the best horror films that have come out in the last, what, yeah, 10 years. Yeah, it's very hard to make they a decent horror good. movie in recent times. It is, because... And he hasn't, like, overkilled them the way that the Saws and the Paranormal Activities have done. I'm looking... I'm actually looking forward to Insidious 3, in which it looks like it's not going to be the same family. It's going to be about something completely different. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. I like the fact the psychic woman is um, now a spirit and she's helping. I think 
saying it's pretty cool because it means there's already somebody in the spirit world. They don't have to keep putting somebody, putting them to sleep and putting them under and getting them to go um, yeah. travelling. There's I already somebody like there. That. So it's I just, and like she's that. a really nice lady as well. I mean, Yeah, she's actually herself. one that you sort of like, I didn't want to see her die. And then mm. when I saw her, it was nice to see her in the second one because yeah. she sort of turned up and you're like, yeah. So what do you, what do you rate this one? Um, Insidious 1, I will rate 8, 8 out of 10. I, wow. I really yeah. enjoyed Sidi Insidious okay. 1, and I remember really enjoying it the first time. I remember watching Insidious and then watching Sinister afterwards, okay. and thinking Insidious is a much better film. Um, the second it. one, I'll give it a 7. I mean, I think, oh, it was, okay. I think it was creepier and scarier, but I think the thing that brings it down is there were so many things that I sort of sat there and went, they'd kind of gone for the easy option there. Okay. I mean, I think the ghost being a serial killer that's an easy option and sort of like going oh yeah no he's not wanted for the murder that was an easy option kind yeah. of thing what do you um i'm somewhere between a seven and a half and an eight for both of them i did really enjoy them i'm such a sucker for horror i mean i'm just i'm too yeah. forgiving i'm hoping there's somewhere there like a lower <laughs> later on so i don't just look like a sucker but yeah i, I think they're both brilliant I'm, I'm I just want to see them again. I just think it's just very difficult to make a really, really good horror movie in recent times. And I've been shocked recently with some good ones. But yeah, we have yeah. had some good ones. But yeah, it's good. Um, this video is getting on a little bit now, so we're yeah. going to cut this one. But um, the next film is The Omen, which is going to be really good. Original Omen as well. We're the not original. Do remake. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's um, all for you, Damien. Woo! Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so as usual, just comment, let us know what you think. And... Um, Keep watching the film because you're gonna love it, and do try to get to see this one while it's in the cinema. Definitely, it should definitely, hopefully, it should definitely be out by the time you watch this. Um, because well, it's just incredible. It's, it's just incredible. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, right. no, go and watch it. If you if if you haven't already seen it, you yeah. should have already seen Insidious One because it was probably one of the best horrors of this last ten years. <laughs> um, but go and see Insidious Two as well. Do it. It's very good. Next time we'll be seeing Tommy the Ghost. Ooh. Ooh, so tick, tick. I'll see you soon. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.